it occurred to me that I never really got enough time to go through this fancy mirror example with you. So I'm just going to share this quick and then we'll jump into our review activity. So here's our fancy mirror. Looks really cool like this when the lights are on. Uh, and then when the lights are off, it just turns into a regular old mirror. So what the heck's going on with this? It occurred to me that I was brought into a world that I do not have to be brought into. Yeah. You're getting a little deep now. Yeah, That's pretty I'm philosophical fine. stuff right there. So if you've ever seen like CSI or those police shows or whatever, you know that you know when people are doing like lineups and stuff, it's a two-way mirror. So the way it works is if the light's coming in from this end and for this oh, device thing, it would be like like I this. I think I know how it works. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got this mirror is a two-way mirror, which means if it's not lit up from behind, it acts as a mirror. But if it is lit up from behind, you can see right through it. So what ends up happening when the lights are off is the light hits that mirror and bounces off, and it's just a regular mirror. When you flip on those lights, you can see what's behind it, and there's a separate mirror behind those lights. So now you've got this part of the mirror acting as a mirror, this part of the mirror acting as a mirror, and the light rays bounce, and they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and that's why it looks Infinite. like it goes on forever, because it just keeps going back and forth like that. So that's your infinite mirror there. How many, could you count how many things? You could until it got infinite. Yes? Okay. How do, like, interrogation mirrors work? It's a one-way mirror? Oh, it's, it's the same thing like this. They just make sure that, like, if you see in the TV shows, so, like, in this one, the criminals would be... You know, on actually, it wouldn't really matter what side they were on, uh, because oftentimes you'll see that when they're picking people out of the lineup, it's dark in that room, mm -hmm. and as long as it's dark, they can't see what's what's behind it. But once it's lit up like that mirror, then you'll see right through. So you want to make sure if you do that that you don't have any bright lights on you there. Yeah. Okay. So with infinity, so like, okay, no, I'm curious. So like, uh, say you like had someone count until infinity. So they literally be there their entire lives, or like, is there a number that we have where like this is the highest number right now, no. and like we're gonna come up with another million term, like when we have to? The reason that we have this um, symbol for infinity is because it never ends; just keeps going and going and going. And the same thing is true with infinity. It's not a high number that's just beyond anything we could ever count. It is, by definition, infinite. You could never get there. Just like you could never reach the end of this course. Plus, light year could like. Fair enough. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. A couple things about the test before we start reviewing. Number one, we're going to be going through a lot of problems today, and you want to make sure that you're practicing these. You want to make sure that when you're studying for this test, that you're not just looking at the answers on a worksheet or the or the review session we're doing today. It always works so much better if you try them on your own, and then when you get stuck, yeah, then maybe you can look at the answer. But try and simulate an actual test. Yes. Two tests tomorrow. Yes. Two tests tomorrow. Yeah, I have two. Two more than four. Question number one on the test is going to look something like this. It'll be a different number, but it'll be the exact same problem. Basically, what we got to do with this is we have to show what this number four is going to look like on the opposite side of the mirror. And we have to show with light rays how it is that you are able to see that image. And so that's what we have to do first here. The other thing, too, in case I would forget to mention this, is I'm available before and after school. If anybody at, at the end of this really would like some extra help and extra practice, feel free to come on in. I'd be more than happy to go through examples with you. The first thing I would do to approach this kind of a problem, if I was doing it myself, is I would take my piece of paper and I would turn it so it's straight up and down. It'd just be easier for me to do that. So if you want to do that, feel free. The next step is you want to pick a couple locations on your number that you can use as a reference point. 
Because in order to draw that number four on the opposite side of the mirror, you have to know the distance from each of those locations um, to this mirror so that you can draw them the same distance on the other side. So all you do is you take your little ruler and you do a little bit of measuring. So here this is two inches away from the mirror. And you want to make sure they're perpendicular. You want to make sure this is at a right angle to your mirror. So that means I'll draw that dot right about there. This next dot here is it's like four and a half inches away from the mirror. So let's see. That goes there. That one's six and a half. So that one's going to go there. And now I have enough information to just redraw this number four. So, you know, these two are going to connect like this. And the rest of it's going to look like that. So you got to make sure you keep track of those dots, too. Now, the next step on this is where it gets a little confusing. What's that? Uh, yeah, so you want to make sure that when you're, when you're doing this, uh, and you're drawing this image, you want to make sure you are paying attention to where these dots are so you don't have something that doesn't look like the actual number. So it might take a little bit of time to do that. But any question on this step here? All right. So now what you have to do is you have to take your straight edge and you have to draw a straight line from each of these dots to the eyeball. Now what you have to remember when you're doing this is that straight line has to be dotted on this side of the mirror and it has to be solid on this side of the mirror. The other one's pretty much right in line with it. But. And of course, make sure to throw your arrows on there so I know what direction those light rays are traveling. The final step then is you have to draw a light ray from where each of these dots is to where that particular dot crosses this mirror. So you can see this bottom dot, its light ray crosses right here. So I got to draw a line from that bottom dot to that spot. Right like that. And you got to do the same thing for the others. So I can't really keep track of which one crossed where, but both of those are going to end up in about the same location. And that's how uh, you would do a problem like this. It seems kind of strange to do it this way. And these should be closer to where they actually cross, but you get the idea. You know, a question might be, why do you do it in this order? Because it seems like it's totally not the order things are happening in. And that is absolutely true. The light goes from the numbers to the mirror and then to the eyeball. And your brain follows them backwards. The reason that I do it in this order is because in the end it's actually simpler. If you actually drew these light rays first going from the dots to the mirror and then to the eyeball, you'd have to try and make sure that they're hitting the, the mirror and bouncing off at the exact same angle. And so things would get a lot more complicated that way. So even though this is, it makes a little bit less sense chronologically, it is much easier to do if you follow the procedure that we just did. Questions on this?
Again, that will be question number one on the test. It'll just be a different number. So be prepared. Light rays going from glass to air. Try and think about what direction it's going to head after it does so. Down. Keegan? Like a cross? No. No, no, no like it's going to like, it's, it's, it's going like more like diagonally. It's going to turn like more like horizontally than uh, vertically. Okay. So Keegan's vote is that it's going to go more horizontal like that. Yeah. 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 Do you guys agree with Keegan? Yeah, yeah. for one. All right. Well, let's make sure. I have a very special car here. This is the Batmobile. Can anybody tell me which Batman movie this Batmobile comes from? Batman. Nope. Batman. Batman Forever. Nice job. Right off the bat. Well done, Chip. Right off the bat. So, yeah, this is uh, circa 1995. One of the better looking Batmobiles, in my opinion. So, if we're going from glass to air... We're going slow now, because glass is a slow medium compared to air. Now the front left tire is in the air. That means this one's moving faster. So if the front left tire is moving fast, it's going to cause the Batmobile to turn across. So that is 100% correct. Well done. And again, if you want to bring a Hot Wheels car in to help you, help you out with these types of problems on the test, feel free to do that. <laughs> Physics is the only class where you can bring a Hot Wheels car in and have it help you on a test. One of the many reasons to love this class. So we've got a light ray coming in here. Maybe the surface is not going to be straight up and down. If that's the case, you might have to just think a little bit harder. Can we turn the paper? Yes. Yeah, if you want to turn your paper so this is up and down, feel free to do that, or the other way. Yeah. It's, it's going to go more down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of people are saying it's going to go down. Anybody want to disagree with them? Yeah, air is the fast medium, glass is the slow. What's the slow? I feel like it's going to be straight. Diamond, probably. So if you had like a diamond, if you had like a diamond wall, like a mile thick, how long would it take to like a mile thick? Oh, it would still go real fast. Much slower than air, but. Light moves so fast you wouldn't even be able to tell. So next we're going to use Sonic the Hedgehog here. Oh, I have too much fun with this camera. Oh! How many of you guys saw the Sonic movie last year? Or this? Yeah. No, this year, but it was... Okay. My wife and I went and saw it. We had a blast. Thought it was great. <laughs> so we got to use Sonic to help us figure this one out. So he's going supersonic fast in the air right now. Nothing to impede his motion, but then he goes into the slow medium. His, left, his right side is going to hit that glass first. So this side is going to slow down. The left side is still moving very quickly, thus causing Sonic to turn downwards, as I heard everybody say. So good job. Break the glass? Yeah, he would probably break right through it. Jim, Car Jim Carrey is hilarious in that movie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's hilarious in all movies. He is. And, you know, he was like the comedy guy when I was in middle school. And then he started doing all these serious movies. It's nice to see him kind of in his classic Jim Carrey roles again. <laughs> all right, what next? I suppose now we ought to put some numbers in with these. Snow. Oh, That's right. I hate snow so much. <laughs> His equation's not that bad. It is. It's just no. because we're going to do the sign and then push 
this is annoying because like you gotta like do like the divided by ten and you gotta do like negative ten. And it's like a lot of ten. Christ is the anti Semitism. What? That's true. That's true. That is exactly. deep. Christ is, is the inverse sign. It's the opposite of sin. He took away our sign. Yeah. I've never heard that before. See, That's Christ cool. is in all things. Absolutely. They said Christ was his sign. So there's Snell's Law right there. Remember, you can use your formula sheets on the test. Does anybody need a formula sheet? If you need one, raise your hand, please, and keep it up till I get to you. All right, there's the problem. See if you can solve it. Anybody confident enough to share their answer? Yes? 1.21 1. 1 sounds absolutely correct to me. You got 21? 23. Yeah, that's a little bit high. That's okay, though. Um, I'll come around and look at, look at it in just a second. Um, let's just go through this one real quick, and uh, we'll see how this goes. If you uh, if you think you did it right, but then you got the wrong answer, maybe you didn't put in uh, degree mode because all calculators should be in degree mode for this. So index of refraction one is going to be one point five. That's where we start. Times the sine of our angle. That's twenty degrees. That's our beginning angle. Second index of refraction is what we're looking for. Then we've got the sine of twenty five as our angle of refraction. So in order to solve for this and get the index of refraction by itself, we have to divide both sides by the sine of 25. Seventy-three. 
So when we get this one, we got 1.21. That would be our index of refraction. Again, make sure your calculators are in degree mode for that. And then multiplied by Jesus. If you did, if you're done with this one, feel free to start the one on the right there. 1.23? That's close enough, right? That's close enough. Yes, I did it right. All right. My suggestion to you for this one would be to draw it out first so you don't get mixed up on where your numbers are. Anybody have questions on this one? Be happy to come around and look if you're wondering about something. That's a good point, though. Um, if you've been using your phone to do these math problems, remember you can't use your phone on, on test day. You have to have a legit calculator. I do have calculators in the back. They are not graphing calculators. They're simple calculators, but they do have sine and cosine. Welcome back, Laura. They find you. They found you. Not quite. You're close, though. Might just be a rounding thing. Not 36 either. No. I put. I. I didn't get 22 either. 21.29. That sounds good. Yep. Take another 30 seconds, then we'll go through it. I wish I was on that right now. Yeah. Can you believe I get paid for this? Is this a live? No, it's not live. But it'll be on YouTube forever. <laughs> Hello, future students. All right. So how many people ended up with 21.3 or 21.29 or something? Good, good. Let's do this together. So let's draw it out first. We go from air into sapphire. That's a fancy one. I use sapphire because it's my birthstone. So air is where we begin. Sapphire is where we end. And we're coming in at a 40 degree angle. Now just from your general knowledge, uh, is this going to bend down or is it going to bend across? Down. And that is absolutely correct. The front right tire is in the slow medium first, so that front left tire is moving faster, causing it to turn downward. So hopefully that angle is less than 40 degrees. And 
what you guys mentioned, that's what it sounds like it is. But let's do this together. N1 is going to be 1, because that's that our first index of refraction. The first angle is 40. And N2 is the index of refraction of sapphire times the sine of the angle that we're looking for. And that's what we need to solve for. So step one in this math is to get rid of this 1.77. And I can do that by dividing. So sine 40 over 1.77. And I just threw away the 1 because 1 times anything is whatever the anything is. So that's equal to the sine of the angle. And the final step to get rid of the sine is to take the inverse sine of that whole side. So 21.3 degrees or something like that. Mm -hmm. Questions on this? Oh, there we go. Practice, practice, practice this. Practice it on whatever calculator you're going to be using for the test tomorrow. Yes? Oh, I'll, I'll come around when, I'm, when we're doing the next round of examples and I'll, we'll take a look at it together. I have outlets. Sure. As you guys kind of finish this up, um, two questions that we're not going to be doing a review on because I want to spend some time on lenses and, and mirrors. Uh, you, you're going to want to take a look at some shadow problems from worksheet number two. There's going to be one of those on there. So worksheet number two with the shadows, there'll be something from that. And then there'll be a, a really basic pinhole camera problem where you can probably figure out how it's going to go. There's going to be a hole in the something and a light source on one side. you got to show me how the image shows up on the other side. So you just draw the light rays going through with those angles that we did on worksheet number three. I don't think we really need to practice that. Okay. Now for these mirror problems, which we'll start with first here, it might be the case where I don't even give you an object. Maybe I just say there's a light ray coming in parallel, where does it go? Or there's a light ray coming in towards the focal point, where does it go? So think about that for just a minute and we'll go through that together. Okay, where is this light ray going? Um, it's going to be from the focal point. Exactly. So this light ray is going to bounce up. And it's going to do that because this is a diverging mirror. It takes light rays and it spreads them out. The angle at which it goes up is lined up with the focal point because it's coming in parallel. You'll always have that relationship. Focal point parallel, parallel focal point. So because this is aimed at the focal point, it's obviously going to come out parallel. Absolutely. Now if these originated from an object, then what would I do to find where the image is? Drag it back. And where they cross is where the image forms. 
It is upright. It is smaller. Is it real or is it virtual? Virtual. virtual. Very good. Just practicing. I mean, it's better to just practice than try and memorize how it's going to go. You know, typically, for like the ones where they converge through the focal point, you'll typically want to think, well, I should shoot it through the focal point so it comes out parallel. I should shoot it parallel so it goes through the focal point. If that doesn't work, then you just have to do the alternative. That's probably the best mindset to have. So, for instance, maybe we've got now the converging mirror. And maybe the focal point is right here. The object is located right there. First light ray I'm going to send in is going to be parallel. So it's going to hit the mirror. And then it's going to go through the focal point. Now, this is one of those scenarios. We can't take a light ray and have it go through the focal point because it would never hit the mirror. Yep. So we have to make a light ray as though it's going up at an angle. It's going to hit the mirror and come out parallel. So again, this is our parallel focal point. This is our focal point parallel. And to find where the image forms, track it back, just like we always do when we've got light rays that don't cross. And again, this is nothing new. We've done this in class probably three times before this. So if you're struggling with this yet, check out the walkthroughs, check out the previous lessons in the video section on Schoology. Feel free to come see me. I'd be happy to go through as many of these examples as you need until you're comfortable. Uh, and you can check out the answer keys for the worksheets too. So there's a lot of places to go if you're still a little confused. Upright, virtual, and bigger. So I feel like how dare you not use a straight lens? <laughs> I know, right? I just want to make sure I have enough time to get through the lenses. I think I have enough time to use a straight edge for the lenses, though. That is a good point. Make sure you have a straight edge with you tomorrow. If you don't, I'll have spares, but it's best you get your own. So we have a nice, well-drawn lens here. This is a diverging lens. Maybe it's the same type of example as before, where I don't even have an object on here. Maybe there are just two light rays, and you've got to figure out where they go. So maybe one light ray does something like this. Where is this light ray going to go? Wait, no, this is the lens going to go on the... going down. Down and then bounce back. Okay, so this is one of those lenses. Yep, and Gavin's right on this one. So this is going to take those light rays and spread them out. So if we're coming in parallel, it's going to go down. And the angle at which it goes down is just lined up with the focal point. That's pretty straight. <laughs> now if I take a light ray and I aim it at the focal point, where is that going? Oh, there's parallel. No, parallel. Parallel, parallel yeah. So yeah, make sure you can just tell where those light rays are going to head, even if you don't have an object that they're coming from. And of course, um, you know, all you do with these refracted light rays to find an image is you follow them back behind the behind the lens.
Now we'll do the more difficult example of a converging lens where the object is in front of the focal point. What's the first light ray we're going to draw in here? Parallel. Parallel. So here it comes in, nice and parallel. Through the focal point. Yep. And then it just goes up like that. Yep. Very good. Yep. And if the lens is big enough, you extend it. Nice job. And that's going to come out going parallel, of course. Track it back, absolutely. If these light rays don't cross, follow them backwards until they finally do. That's where the image forms. Upright or inverted? Upright. Upright. Bigger or smaller? Bigger. Real or virtual? Virtual. Very good. How do you know it's virtual? Because it's upright. It's upright. What's the other way? It's not real. Yeah, that's true. If these are pretend light rays, like these are here, they're not real, then it is not a real image. It is virtual. Is there ever an RV? <laughs> ever and circumstances where it's upright and it's real? Yeah, you'd have to have more than one lens, though. Uh oh. So, you have to do like a special flip, which we could do if we spent another week or two with this. Is that true that our eyes flip? Yep. Yep, the, if you would <laughs> if you would if you would remove your eyeball and see the actual image that forms on your retina, it's upside down. And it's your brain that flips it right side up for you. Maybe. I wouldn't try it though, that'd be a lot of headaches. But yeah, like right now, if I'm looking at you guys on my retina, you're actually right side up. <laughs> this room looks way different like this. Um, the other thing I just want to mention is with this kind of lens, if you've got like a light source here and you've got a piece of paper here, you're going to see an image on that piece of paper. What happens to that image if you cover up half the lens? Exactly. You're still going to see that entire image. It's just going to be a little bit dimmer because every part of this lens contributes to that image formation. Good work.